Welcome to your worship, you're live. Thank you very much, Stephanie. Uh, Councilor Madigan, do you have the land there? Uh, I'm getting there, sir, and I apologize. Okay. I'm just saying hello to everybody in our community. I've recently moved, so I'm a little bit disheveled this morning, but I finally have Wi-Fi at my new home, and it has been absolutely amazing, but I don't know where anything is quite yet. But that doesn't mean that I don't know where my iPad is sitting right in front of me. That's just a horrible excuse. All right. I'm ready, All right. sir. All right, Council. It's nine o'clock and we have a full agenda. I will call the Strategic Initiative Standing Committee meeting for Friday, November 5th, 2021 to order. We'll start off with the land acknowledgement and I'll look to Councillor Madigan, please. I thank you so much. For more than 15,000 years, the First Nations have walked upon cared for the lands that we now call home, the Anishabek, the Haudenosaunee, and the Ojibwe, and many others who cared for their families and communities the way we now seek to care for ours. The town of Collingwood acknowledges the Lake Simcoe Nautosaga Treaty of 1818 and respects all of the nation to nation agreements that have formed relationships with the original inhabitants of Turtle Island. The reality of our shared history, the current contributions of Indigenous people within our community and seeks to continue empowering expressions of pride amongst all the diverse stakeholders in this area. We seek to do better, to continue to recognize, learn and grow in friendship and community, nation to nation. Thank you, Councillor. And that brings us to the adoption of the agenda. And the motion reads that the content of the Special Strategic Initiative Standing Committee round bracket budget and bracket agenda for November 5, 2021 be adopted as presented. And I had a request to pull the budget presentation forward. Uh, so unless there's any objection from any council member, and uh, that's how we'll proceed. So I'll look for a mover. Oh, go ahead, CEO Skinner. Thank you, Your Worship. We need about 10 minutes to make sure that we've outlined clearly all the items that we would be asking Council to uh, to opt into above the 1% uh, cap. Um, and that wasn't set out clearly in the uh, the original presentation. So if we, I don't know if there's a flexibility to uh, uh, to do that or if the, uh, we had an understanding of the time constraints so that we could uh, get Council what they need. Okay, um, with that being said, um, uh, then I guess we can start with the, uh, with the uh, compensation report and, uh, and go from there to get some extra time. So uh, with that being said, I need a mover and a seconder, please, for the motion. Uh, to adopt the agenda, can I get a mover and a seconder, please? Councillor Berman and Councillor Jeffrey, all in favor? And that is carried unanimously, thank you. Uh, declarations of pecuniary interest. Are there any declarations today, Council? Councillor Jeffrey? Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. I don't plan to be there for the discussion, I don't think, because um, I'm here short term, but um, I have declared a conflict with respect to the non-union employee compensation uh, review vote as a, a member of my family is employed by the town of Collingwood as a permanent part-time employee. Thank you, Councillor, that's noted. Any others? If you find yourself in that position as we proceed uh, through the agenda, please let us know. So we'll start off then with 4.1, which is HR 2021-3 non-union and council compensation review. The last session we had uh, the um, presentation from our consultant and I'm gonna look to the clerk. I think we went out for public comment on that and we did. So then it is uh, on the floor uh, for council comment and questions. Councillor Berman. Thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Uh, I'm going to ask that the, um, the last part of the recommendation is severed because I have an amendment I'd like to offer up for that. So that's the recommendation dealing with the council compensation, Councillor? Yes. Okay, so I, I have that severed. And would you like the amendment, sorry, three, would you like the amendment now or when we come to it? Uh, when we come to it, Councillor. Okay. 
Thank you. Council questions, comments? Councilor McLeod. Thank you. Um, I have, do we have our uh, consultant with us for this meeting? Because I have a couple of questions for the consultant and I'm not sure whether we brought them back since we- Yes, my understanding is that the Perfect. consultant is with us today. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, so my question through you, uh, Mr. Mayor, is about the timing of this, uh, of this report. Um, because I am familiar with the fact that we um, asked for this report in June. Uh, sorry, was supposed to arrive. This report was uh, supposed to arrive in June of 2020. We asked for it in July of 2019. And I understand that, um, that COVID exists, but we're being told uh, by our staff, and, and I believe them, uh, that uh, productivity did not actually drop at all uh, because we sent people home during COVID and, and uh, that lots and lots of work was done. So I'm just wondering why it is that this report is 16 months late. All right, I will look to staff first. Go ahead, uh, Executive Director Peg. Thank you, Worship. Through you to Councilor McLeod. So in, in the particular case of this um, initiative, COVID did have an impact in the sense that staff priorities shifted to respond to the pandemic. Um, when we were looking at the priorities that were on the list, uh, this one happened to trickle to the bottom um, when we're looking at the non-union compensation piece. Also significant work did continue to happen on this project. There was a number of job descriptions that needed to be updated um, and it took more time than we had anticipated. That said, I will ask um, Manager McQuaig if she has anything to add in terms of some of the delays as I was not here for the entire project. Thank you. Melissa. To you to Council McLeod. Uh, as the executive director mentioned, yes, there was well, work uh, certainly continued to happen while people were working remotely. This particular project involved all levels of the organization. Um, so at the time when COVID, when we started working remotely and had to focus on COVID and specifically HR was quite involved in all of the procedures, the recovery, all of those meetings, um, recruitment continued to happen as well uh, during that time. And the staff were to review their job descriptions with their supervisors. And so there, there was that trickle effect of having to divert energy to dealing with the pandemic, having those foundation pieces done and then working its way through. Um, and again, there's capacity issues still um, during that time as well. So yes, work continued to be done, but certainly there were, uh, there were significant delays. There were many steps to be completed before that deadline that we had hoped um, in 2020. Hello, Councillor. Uh, thank you. I, I do understand about priorities and so on, but COVID hit in March and this was supposed to be here in June of 2020. So it just seems odd to me, uh, and this is more of a comment than a question, that 16 months later, here we are when we were two months from the, from the finish line on this report. Um, however, uh, thank you. Um, the motion from December of 2019 was to review the role of a council member as part-time employment. And I think this speaks to our consultant. Uh, so where in the report is, is that um, taken into consideration? Through you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Masansky. Okay, thank you. Uh, we actually did not take, uh, it went within the scope of a compensation review for um, a compensation consultant to take a look at whether you should be a full-time uh, councillor member or a part-time councillor member. Um, all I can say is that the comparator organizations are, uh, I would say, 100% listed or identified as part-time members. And that's the extent of the comment that I can make on the full-time versus part-time status. Thank you. And so through you, Mr. Mayor, I would turn to our staff and say, why wasn't our consultant directed to do what the council directed staff to do? The staff who would like to take that. Go ahead, uh, Executive Director. Thank you, Your Worship. Through you to Councillor McLeod. So as um, the consultant noted, the status of council was included in the analysis of compensation. So of the comparator municipalities, their full-time or part-time status was 
taken um, into consideration in the compensation review, but in terms of a recommendation for Town of Collingwood Council to move from either part-time or full-time status, that wasn't considered. Um, and I would again look to uh, Manager McQuaig if she has anything to add to that in addition. Thank you. Manager McQuaig. Uh, thank you, uh, through you. The scope of the compensation um, review, the RFP was for the compensation to be reviewed. Um, I, we did not request the consultant to consider uh, whether council should be full-time or part-time. And I don't think that that would have been within the expertise um, of this particular consultant or any of the consultants that would do the compensation review for the non-union um, to be able to make those recommendations for council. Uh, up, thank, thank you. Uh, and so I would repeat my question because I'm, I'm pretty sure that the motion, the resolution from this council in December of 2019 was to look at that. And so I'm not entirely sure how we ended up not looking at that. Is there, can someone tell me why we didn't when that was the direction of council? Executive Director Peg and then CAO Skinner. Go ahead, Executive Director. Um, thank you, Your Worship. I, I may defer to CEO Skinner since she did put her card up, um, but I will note that it was taken into consideration in the sense of a compensation review, um, but I will turn to the CAO to, to comment. CEO Skinner. Thank you, Your Worship. To you to <coughs> Councilor McLeod. That's an important question. I think it's one that we would need to take away. I hope that there hasn't been a gap, but it's possible that there has been, and I would like to, uh, to review the, uh, the motion from Council. Any follow-up, Councillor McLeod? No, thank you. That's uh, that's fine on that one. Uh, and uh, I think this is my final question regarding this. This nope, I have one more after this. Um, the original report uh, in uh, 2019, upon which we based our request for this uh, consultant's report, uh, talks about cost of living allowances for uh, council. Uh, this report, I didn't see any. Maybe I missed it, but. Uh, I don't feel as though there is a motion of COLA with regard, or a, a notion rather, of COLA with regard to uh, council in this, uh, in, in the council report. Um, through you, Mr. Mayor, could somebody speak to that, please? Go ahead, Ms. Mansansky. Uh, I believe in the, the final uh, slide presentation or in the, in the body of the report, there's an indication that council has traditionally maintained their COLA or uh, annual adjustments tied to the non-union group. Um, and the recommendation is to maintain doing that. It's, uh, it's a standard practice across the municipal sector. Um, it's, it's a good best practice. So that would be the addressing of, uh, of a COLA increase. Thank you, excellent. Uh, and I'm curious to know, we talk about in the, uh, the non-union staff report that came through, about moving to a new grid and green circling and that sort of thing. And I wonder if um, we could just get sort of an explanation <laughs> on how that, on what green circling really means. I'm familiar with a concept called red circling when it comes to human resources, but I, I'm not sure what green circling is. And, and uh, I wouldn't mind just having a little bit of an explanation about what that, what that means. Ms. Mazansky. So green circling, uh, you're right, it's a red circling, pink circling is another term that we can use, and then there's green circling. So red circling meaning if your position has been reevaluated and it now sits in the lower pay band, your, your uh, salary happens to be higher than the maximum of that pay band. So your salary is frozen uh, until such time with all the different COLA increases going through each year, your salary then will fall into play. So red circling means zero increases uh, until the, the COLA catches up. Uh, pink circling is another option. It does say that you can give, uh, some organizations would give, let's say half of the COLA so that the, the impact of being red circled is not as detrimental to the incumbent. Um, so they're still going to be outside of that salary grid for a longer period of time, uh, but at least it softens the blow and keeps them motivated and, and engaged in the organization. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult to administer just because it's an additional, you have to keep an eye on those individuals in terms of giving them the half 
half a percent. So if you gave a 2% cola, you would give them 1% or some variation thereof. Green circling means that we are not going to freeze their salaries. Given the incumbents, the positions that uh, we're, we're speaking about in particular, they happen to be uh, in some of the hard to recruit positions in the, uh, in the municipal sector right now. Um, and we also wanna make sure that we don't uh, lose the motivation and um, engagement of those individuals. So it's been suggested that you consider green circling them meaning they will get the full COLA year after year. They will always sit outside of their current salary grid until such time they vacate that position. When a new incumbent is brought in, they come into the, the salary grid that's established for the position. So it's, it's, a, it's a, a technique or a strategy designed to make sure that you don't lose those uh, good employees. It just happens to be the structure of the new compensation plan that has uh, downgraded their position. Uh, in terms of the structure, but we don't want to lose them as valued employees and critical positions as well in some instances. Thank you. Uh, that's very helpful. Can you tell me uh, with regard to this, uh, to our non-union workers, uh, what percentage of or what even number, uh, considering we're talking about a fairly small number of people, uh, are moving into that new grid and, and getting a raise? or being green circled? Ms. Uh, I don't actually have the number of people getting a raise. Some of the, the ranges of increases are like 0.5%, some are 1.5%, just depends on what step they're sitting in. I apologize, I don't have the number of people that are getting an actual increase. Um, and then the number of green circle, um, I think we had 10 incumbents that were that would be red circled. So those are the, those would be the ones that we're suggesting should be green circled. And again, so green circle means they do move into a position or they keep their salary, even though the grid says that they ought not uh, have Perfect. that salary at this time. Correct. So 10 of those, but we don't know how many are automatically getting moved up uh, okay. in, their, uh, in this. I apologize, I don't have that number <coughs> handy. I see uh, Manager McQuay gets her hand up, Melissa. Your Worship, um, there were at least 12 individuals that were making some movement from lower um, bands into the higher bands and those were the, for the step A uh, that was recommended. So I do have that number in front of me. There were, there were 12 of those individuals. Thank you. And thank you. Thank you. And so some of those, those 12 individuals would be moving into a higher band plus getting COLA through you, Mr. Six. Mayor. Yeah, Melissa. Uh, yes, so basically if, if the, entire, the entire grid generally gets the COLA, uh, so there are the 12 individuals that are currently below where the start of the new grid is, so they would have a, the implementation step, so a, a transition step before actually moving into the new grid. Right, okay, thank you. Uh, and so those are the end of my questions. My comments are is that, uh, is that I am very concerned about uh, moving into a, a new grid where we have a I believe the latest uh, Sunshine List says that we have 50 employees who are on the Sunshine List. And we're hearing stories about how inflation is uh, difficult. And even at our last Strategic Initiatives Committee meeting, we had quite a report on affordable housing and about the disparities that we've got in this town and how people can afford to live here. And I am having a struggle with the fact that we have this many people at the town's employ on the town's employ who are doing so very, very well. And, uh, and I understand that they all work very hard and are uh, living up to their commitments, but I feel as though the optics are not great for us to be moving 12 people into, uh, into big raises or raises at all when they're already getting COLA no matter what. Uh, and we're struggling with an affordable housing crisis in this town and, uh, and have just come through a pandemic. I'm really having a hard time. I'm trying to be compassionate to our staff, but I also am mindful of uh, the compassion that is required for our citizens. And uh, so I'm having quite a struggle here and I'm not entirely sure yet uh, what I wanna do, uh, but I'm happy to listen. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. I don't know if there's anyone who would like to respond to that. 
Um, I have CEO Skinner, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Worship. I think this is a really good point and it's one that we, uh, we should put on the table and talk about. Um, the number one thing that I think about is it's not a zero sum game. And uh, I really feel for the people who are struggling for housing, those who lost their jobs, um, the things that we see around town. And I think that that's what we're all here for, to make sure that we move forward together. Um, the kinds of people that, um, that we're hiring and that we're paying great, you know, uh, P50. And I think the consultant, uh, Jane, will talk about what <laughs> P50 is in the moment, which is like in the middle of a typical uh, municipal compensation range to are the people that were, you know, are, are working on the official plan, are trying to, to build in things that will address housing considerations. They're working on economic development and how to attract employers um, who pay good wages to the town. So the way that I look at this is how do we get the team council needs um, fairly, which is the work that the um, uh, Ms. Mazansky has done, um, keep them here, keep them motivated and uh, keep them driving toward uh, where council would like to take the town. So I, 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 I do have faith in the report and I think council will, you know, are, are making their own assessment, but it is about having the people who can turn around um, the investment in them into good for the community uh, where council focuses that desire for good. Thank you. Thank you, CAO Skinner. Executive Director Peg, did you have anything to add to that? I know you had your hand up. Thank you, Worship. No, I think that was uh, very well said by CAO Skinner. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any other questions or comments on the compensation report? Councillor Doherty and then Councillor Hamlin. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, I am inclined to agree with uh, the CAO's assessment of um, the wage bands and where our staff sit today. Um, I think it's, uh, first of all, important to remember that these recommendations were not made in a void. Uh, they were uh, made taking into consideration municipalities that are of similar size uh, and uh, demographics. And um, I'm also inclined to be very supportive of the notion that if we want good people, we have to pay for those good people. And in turn, we can have very high expectations for the performance of those good people, but nonetheless, we will never get them if our wage offerings are not competitive. I'd also like to make a comment uh, in regard to the notion of whether Collingwood Town Council should be full or part-time. Uh, I uh, will admit that I do not recall the exact wording of the resolution. However, I do not believe uh, that a uh, recommendation to uh, change the job description of a municipal council should be in the hands of a private or public sector uh, consultant. Uh, this is a matter having to do with governance. This is a matter having to do with our ability to fulfill our mandate relative to the Municipal Act. Uh, this is also uh, our most municipalities in Ontario, like it or not, uh, their elected officials are part-time. That's just how it works. We don't do it for the money. We do it for the allegiance to the, the love of our community, the love of the work. Um, you know, that may or may not be uh, enough um, for some, but that is the reality. Uh, and so I'm quite uh, comfortable with the fact that um, this analysis did not include any uh, recommendations in regard to full or part-time for Municipal Council of the Town of Collingwood. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Doherty. Uh, Councillor Hamlin. 
Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Firstly, I'll, I'll just support Councillor Doherty's uh, comments um, about uh, the support for CAO's uh, response on our salaries for our, our staff. I do think our municipality uh, has a lot of directions it's heading into now that are beyond the pale of, I'll just say, most others. <laughs> And uh, I am been so happy with some of the uh, hires that we've made uh, with their depth of experience. And I, I certainly wouldn't want us to see go, us to go backwards, uh, hiring less experienced staff as we uh, embrace some of these new ideas. Um, in terms of the counselor uh, makeup and composition, um, I have a few questions and a few comments. Um, in, I know that picking comparables is more of an art than a science. <laughs> I appreciate uh, that, but I, when I, you know, I've, you know, we've all been sitting here now three years, and I have been somewhat uh, shocked. <laughs> I'm going to put it that way by the responsibilities that I see that our council has. That I'm going to say are somewhat different than other municipalities. Um, I see that we're a growth node, um, and that. Um, the growth between 2011 and 2016, according to the report of the consultant we heard at the Affordable Housing Task Force report introduction, uh, we had a 13% growth and the rest of Ontario had 4%, <laughs> um, which means that we deal with a lot more things uh, in our community to accommodate that growth. And I'm not gonna detail them all, we know. Um, that we are offering infrastructure and particularly water infrastructure to more than our own community. And even the massive building of our new water treatment plant uh, that we will be financing um, is mostly to serve another municipality and other municipalities, uh, not our own. Uh, we are serving as a regional center uh, for a community somewhere between 100 to 200,000 people. And they come here for their medical services, um, their professional services, the hospital. Uh, if you wanna uh, locate a business here in this region, you come here because you wanna be close to your suppliers and maybe your customers. Um, so, and the other last thing I'll just mention is in terms of population, we have a very robust part-time population that is here more than the typical. If we look to, for example, the Muskoka area, their part-time residents might be there for a few months in the summer. Ours are here all year round. And so we as counselors deal with them, uh, our staff deal with them. And so I think that population is something, you know, that we don't recognize when we're looking at comparators. So my question for this uh, is through you, Mr. Mayor, to our consultant, the kind of things I just mentioned, are those things that you've taken into account in picking the comparables uh, before us today? Thank you. Ms. Mazansky. Thank you. Uh, to a degree, I mean, um, it, is it a, a really deep dive across every municipality in Ontario to consider whether they are of equal growth opportunity? I, I would say no. Um, the, the comparator list we, as our starting point, we would look at population, we would look at household, we would look at geographic locations. So some of the basic considerations that we take into account in selecting the comparators. Um, but then we also did consider uh, some of that seasonal influx. And as you say, yours is not what we would call a typical seasonal influx. It's more of, a, a, I don't want to use the word transient, but definitely um, you do have this, this uh, ebb and flow of your, your um, population that you're serving. So the uh, list of comparators was prepared, taken into consideration some of the growth opportunities. Um, again, it, it is, uh, we indicated at the outset, we did start the road back in 2019. Um, I think there's been a lot of changes in the municipal sector since that point in time in terms of growth and things that are going on and the, the issues that uh, councils are dealing with. But we came up with a list of comparators and um, ran it past the, uh, the senior management group as well. So it was a consultative process in terms of landing on what are the appropriate comparator organizations. And this is uh, the list that we have come up with. 
Thank you. <laughs> yes, I have a follow up on that, Ms. Mayor. Um, a few of the municipalities like Huntsville, Clearview, Meaford, uh, Wasaga Beach, Town of the Blue Mountains, they have substantially less population uh, than we do. Uh, why would they have been included? Uh, to a certain degree, um, similar types of situations or, or comparator markets where they're, they're trying to attract, uh, we take into consideration things like what's the largest geographic area, uh, urban center that is within commuting distance, does that impact on the ability to attract people? Um, you know, where would your employees come from? We take that into account. The, the, the uh, municipality of Meaford is, um, I recognize it's a much smaller municipality. They do tend to be a lower payer, but it is a neighboring municipality. And I think we'd be remiss if we did not include Meaford um, because it is a potential comparator organization, not necessarily, I would say that you would be losing employees to perhaps, uh, but you may get uh, gain employees from there. But I think because it is in such close proximity, we would have to include Meaford. Um, Huntsville and Wasega Beach, they, they, do have, um, they do have the seasonal aspect of it. That's not always just the summertime seasonal. Um, but may have the, uh, the around uh, ebb and flow of, of populations or um, citizens to attract. Well, okay. Councillor. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I guess from my perspective, my comment would be, um, it would be great to have uh, maybe a more fulsome discussion even at council uh, with some of the staff uh, about what are the comparable municipalities um, and what are the responsibilities of this council compared to others uh, when we're setting compensation. Um, my next um, area I wanted to explore was this part-time, full-time, um, what should our salary you know, grid be? Um, should we have wards? Um, there's a lot of things that I feel we talk about as a community that maybe now is a good time for us, you know, I know this would be something that would be impacting the next council, not our own, <laughs> um, but we have to make decisions now for this next council. And I noticed uh, in the report that's before us on this topic on page four, uh, staff says, and I'll, I'll just read, it's just a few lines, Mr. Mayor. Although council composition elements, such as the total number of councillors, and part-time full-time status were out of the scope for the current compensation review, staff are aware that council may wish to explore these components further. If desired, council may direct staff to report back on opportunities to explore these options and recommended timelines. And uh, I'm just, if I could uh, ask a question through you, Mr. Mayor, uh, of our staff, uh, what kind of report and who would be involved in this if council was to follow up on this suggestion? I'd like the staff to take that. Um, Manager McQuaid. I'm, I'm sorry, uh, Your Worship. Um, if I could ask Councillor Hamlin to uh, repeat the question, please. Yeah, thank you. I think, yeah, I think if um, perhaps our executive director might be able to uh, comment on this, Mr. Mayor, she had her hand up. I didn't see the hand up. Okay, Executive Director Pegg, we're looking at a question about when we'd have the discussion on the governance structure. Okay, I see Clerk Almas's hand up. <laughs> thank you. Okay, I guess thank we'll go to the clerk. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, to, to address Councillor Hamlin's question, generally the governance components would fall under uh, a responsibility of the clerk's department. Um, at this point in, the, in this council term, um, obviously a, a moving towards a ward system prior to the next election um, uh, is not a consideration. Um, what is a consideration is potentially adding that as a question to the ballot. Um, in the election, um, there is timelines um, that we'd have to meet uh, starting in, in uh, early February, I believe. Um, the question has to be identified and provided uh, before March um, of 2022. With respect to the full-time part-time status, uh, that would most likely involve uh, a consultant's uh, participation. Um, staff could undertake 
um, some of the, the background work. Um, it would be a detailed uh, report and obviously the comparators would be significant. Um, there was a paper that was uh, prepared by uh, actually AMCTO all about compensation reviews uh, in 2016. 2017 uh, timeframe that talks about all the various components that are involved in, in such a consideration. Thank you. Clear Thank thoughts. you. Yeah, because one thing, and you know, I do appreciate Councillor Doherty's comments that you know this is a public service, and you know we it, we take it as it comes. However, I I am so cognizant of the fact that we would have a wider pool of candidates if I can put them that way for council. Uh, if the compensation was, you know, all to say full time, so we could have younger people who might be parents in our community who can't possibly juggle a full time job, a family and the part time responsibilities that come with this position. So if the if the council position was full time, uh, perhaps we could attract some younger people who are have families uh, to our council table, uh, they would be able to fit it into their life. When we heard the report from uh, Michael, uh, sorry, Nick Michaels the other night, he mentioned not only does our community have a growing senior population, but we have a growing population of the under 40s. And I would love to see some of those at the council table. So um, depending on how all the other motions are gonna come forward, I would be uh, asking for uh, consideration uh, from council today to have staff come back to us uh, with a report on how we could proceed to uh, explore opportunities such as number of council members and part-time full-time status. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Deputy Mayor Hall. Uh, thank you. I don't have any questions. I do have several comments though. Uh, specific to the uh, council compensation um, either I missed uh, what our intent was from the first outset or uh, direction wasn't followed, but I certainly do look forward to uh, having a better appreciation of uh, what we thought we were receiving and what we actually have received today. Um, I think that when it comes to council compensation, uh, I think that uh, we're quite frankly, uh, and I'm not referring to calling what I'm referring to the 444 municipalities across Ontario, uh, we're a bunch of chickens. And perhaps what it takes is somebody who's not running for re-election to stand up and take the bull by the horn and let people know that one, uh, this is what we do. We're proud of what we do. And uh, these are the roles and responsibilities. And two, that we start to have a genuine conversation about the role and the evolution of council. When, when I look at the screen and I look at some of the councillors who have been at the table for a span, not necessarily consecutive terms, but over a period of decades, I think that they would acknowledge that the role has changed immensely. The fact that we are connected 24 seven, that the liability that we are exposed to through different acts, through different responsibilities has grown immensely. And the fact that our, our uh, constituents who quite frankly, the majority don't even know who we are, expect a, a far greater amount of uh, response from us and accountability. Uh, has, has increased by a number that is, quite frankly, unimaginable. At the same time, the compensation hasn't changed. Um, I fully agree with Councillor Hamlin's uh, uh, comments that if compensation was, was appropriate, that I think that other persons would take a serious look at this as a proud uh, profession, one that they would want to participate in, and that they would be willing to step away uh, from uh, perhaps their current occupation or sl uh, slim that back so that they would be able to work in a full capacity as a, a councillor representing their constituents. The evolution of the position has been fraught with uh, problems for a period of time. Um, you know, I, I find it the irony is overwhelming uh, in the sense that the outset of uh, this provincial parliament, uh, well, not parliament, but this provincial government's mandate uh, they were able to pull back the number of representatives within the city of Toronto uh, to 25 councillors. However, the report that they penned and authored uh, or requested to have authored uh, through Ken Sealing and Michael Fenn, which I think would have brought around potentially tremendous legislative change through this province, was uh, sealed and put on a shelf uh, under um, Crown, uh, Crown Privy and Seal. 
the, the other thing that I would point out to, and this doesn't have anything to, as it relates to the direct compensation, but it does relate to uh, one's ability or one's maybe view to, you know, the willingness to step up. And that is that I think that one of the greatest um, uh, mistakes that this province made is the fact that uh, it's not that long ago in the history of this province that, that aldermen were actually one term, one year. Then they, have, then they evolved to two, and then they evolved to three. At some point, they changed the name to councillors, and we now have finally arrived at four. And four has been the death. And I think when you talk to a number of councillors, it's been the death for a number of reasons. One is that it is a, a significant amount of, it's a significant commitment um, to which you're not properly compensated. Two is that I think it does speak to Councillor Hamlin's point, and that is that it immediately eliminates a whole host of people who think, you know, when, if it was a two-year commitment, a three-year commitment, they may look at it and say, you know what, I am willing to make that sacrifice. But that fourth year, quite frankly, for a lot of people, I think is the death. Um, and, uh, and when I have conversations with people at the county who are lower tier representatives, I, I, I hear that echoed, that the biggest mistake that was made as it relates to municipal low -tier, lower tier uh, governments was when we finally went from three to four years, uh, because it has brought on a whole host of unintended consequences, uh, compensation being probably the least, but certainly directly tied in. Um, but I, I'm, I'm disappointed that the fact that um, we're not having an honest conversation today about what it is that we do, having a conversation about, uh, you know, the commitment that individuals make. I mean, I'm not, this is not picking on one versus the other, but clearly look around the table and you can see who is, who is doing what in terms of the number of hours uh, serving on additional committees, servicing on d additional task force, those things, none of those are compensated. And it's not for the greater good. I mean, come on. Uh, and, and I think it's, an, it's time that we had an honest conversation about what is the, the actual salary that we're going to pay people to uh, come and, and represent the community. And then let's have an additional honest conversation about how it is that we're going to compensate members who go clearly above and beyond in terms of the hours and the commitment in terms of their effort uh, away from the table, because they, they, there is a separation. And if we're at being honest about it, there's no question about that. Um, so at, at some point, and it, unfortunately the clock is against us, uh, I, I don't think that we can do anything about it in terms of having something done that would be an effective review that we could then have in place for uh, the next council to be able to embrace and run with. But I certainly hope that the next council will take a serious look at this issue. And uh, I certainly will be behind them, pushing them uphill to ensure that they're properly compensated. On the, uh, uh, the other issue as it relates to staff, I agree with Councillor Dory uh, that um, we live in a, a world in terms of the best and the brightest have opportunities to go uh, anywhere they want in the world. We're not competing with uh, the hiring of employees for um, you know, municipalities across the province, but those who have the skill sets and the training have opportunities to, to quite frankly work uh, anywhere they want in Ontario, Canada, and across the world. And in fact, we've had some employees come and go who have worked uh, throughout the United States, across Canada, et cetera, and now they work in our local region. And that's just a, a small example of um, you know, the, the challenges in terms of attracting and then maintaining uh, talent. Um, so I, I fully support uh, compensating people to be, uh, you know, a, a part of the, the municipality. Uh, that said, uh, if we're going to pay these people uh, the wages that they uh, deserve in terms of their salary and their overall compensation, then I think the level of accountability has to be raised, uh, that there, on, there, there needs to be accountability on certain issues. Uh, that um, uh, it's not acceptable to certainly, you know, to accept the status quo, to accept the, the lowest common denominator. Uh, the reality is that if we put out uh, bold requests to look at things in terms of uh, how we see the community being shaped or transformed, 
I don't want to hear about the lowest common denominator as it relates to a provincial mandate or a provincial playbook. I want to understand and appreciate what it is that people are doing in other communities, whether it be in Ontario, across the country, throughout the world that are cutting edge as it relates to the environment, transportation, public safety, et cetera. Um, and uh, I, I'm willing to pay for that. So if we're gonna hire people who are going to be our, our engineers, then I want somebody who is well compensated, the best and the brightest, but I want somebody who is bold, intuitive, initiative, and, and brings and raises the bar as it relates to our standards from a public sector. And uh, that would be my comment uh, going forward. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Mayor. Council, any other further comments or questions? We've had a good discussion. Uh, Councilor Berman, I know you had your amendment for the uh, the last piece that you've severed. Yeah, go ahead, Councilor Berman. Thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Uh, uh, aside from that, I did have uh, a comment and a question, and then you can tell me when you want the amendment. Um, the comment is uh, the conversation about... Uh, council compensation and whether it should be full-time or part-time. I think this is something that uh, I, it's been council talk or coffee shop talk since I started following politics. And uh, I just don't think there is a, a clear cut answer. I think that uh, when we talk about, and I'm not disagreeing with what my colleagues have said, but I think the flip side to it is that if you, if you offer a pay for a full-time counselor, you run the risk of attracting the wrong type of people to run for council because the only reason they're running is because it's a good paying job and not for the, um, you know, the reasons that somebody might do it. You can make the same argument as to why council should be volunteer positions as well. So I think we all have our idea of what makes a good uh, counselor. And I don't, you know, I, I, I always say that it takes thick skin, common sense and a moral compass. And I don't think you're going to necessarily get those qualities by offering more money. So I'm not disagreeing with my colleagues that have brought that forward. That's just my comment on that. It, it is one or the other. I have one question uh, that's in general, if you, if I may, through you, through you to uh, whomever. Um, the uh, under number five effect on the town finances, and I think this is largely to do with the uh, the staff element of this. Has this been factored into the uh, budget already, or if we approve this as it is, is this? going to be added to the budget in the next half hour before we discuss the budget. I see Councillor Manager McQuay has her hand up. Go ahead, Melissa. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, through to Councillor Berman. Yes, this, uh, this estimate has already been included into the uh, estimates for the operational budget that, that you will see later this morning. Thank you. And then do you want, sorry, through you, Mayor Sunderson, do you want an amendment or do you just want to let me know when you uh, you know what? I'll come back to you when we, we get to the severed item. Thank you, Councillor. Councillor Hammond, I'm going to give you a last word. We've had a long discussion here and you've had one opportunity to speak already. So go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I have a question uh, for staff following from Deputy Hall's comment. Um, and I did agree with everything he said, <laughs> except for uh, he mentioned that he did not think we had time during our term of council uh, to address our compensation issue and um, the part-time full-time question uh, for the next term of council. And I'm just wondering from staff uh, if this is the case or if this is something we would be able to turn our mind to even if it was in the new year. Thank you. Who would like to take that question? Clerk Thomas, go ahead, Sarah. Certainly, thank you, Your Worship. I believe that the number of uh, members of council um, is required to be established by the end of that year. However, we are, um, we'll take a look at that and I'll make sure to report back to council confirming timelines. Thank you. Okay. All right, council, we've had a good discussion. Uh, we have severed off, uh, well, I guess I better read the motion in. Uh, so the motion reads as follows. It's staff report HR 2021-3 non-union and council compensation review be received. And that the compensation review final reports as presented by Gallagher Benefit Services Group, uh, Round Bracket Canada and Bracket Inc. be received. 
and further that council directs staff to proceed with the recommended adjustments and updates to the non-union salary grid based on the recommendations of Gallagher Benefit Services Group Canada Inc. effective January 1, 2022, including the use of green circling and step A principles as described in the consultant report. And further, the council directs staff to amend the associated human resources policies to reflect industry standards in benefits administration, vacation allotment, and overtime slash time in lieu principles, as outlined within the report, save and except for department head time in lieu provisions. And further, the council compensation provisions be amended slash maintained based on the recommendations of the Gallagher Benefit Services Group, uh, Canada Inc. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Moved by Councillor Jeffrey, seconded by Councillor Doherty. We've had a request to sever the final paragraph dealing with uh, council compensation. Excuse me, Mayor Saunderson. Yes. I can't vote on the non-union uh, part, so I, could, I can't move that motion. Right. Okay, um, so we'll sever that um, as well. I'm going to look... Uh, to Clerk Almas, because the, really this the main body of the motion deals with the non-union grid, so I don't know that we can uh, remove that um, and have Councillor Jeffrey move any portion of this. I, I think, Councillor, you, you probably need to not move any aspect of this. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... Yeah, um, I was just putting... Sorry, Mayor. I was just putting my hand up to let you know that I couldn't do... I oh. couldn't participate in that half. All right. <laughs> Okay, so I'll get it moved by Councillor Doherty and seconded by Councillor Hamlin. Uh, we've had good discussion. Um, so Councillor Jeffrey, uh, you'll step aside. Okay, uh, Councillor McLeod, one last comment. Thank you. I'm not sure what uh, Councillor Berman's uh, amendment is, but I also have one uh, for the final and further that or an amendment to the entire motion. Uh, this is to do with council compensation. Councillor Berman's amendment is to the final and further that uh, if you have an amendment for the, the paragraphs preceding, uh, this would be your opportunity to put that on the floor. Uh, it would actually be subsequent to uh, um, the, so it would be an additional and further that. Oh, yes. so it's an additional paragraph after. Yes, please. Okay. Um, so then we have the first, uh, save and accept the last paragraph. We have the first four paragraphs on the table and we've had good discussion. I will say uh, before I call the vote that I see uh, staffing as a critical investment in uh, the operations of our corporation and the efficiencies. Uh, but uh, I agree that as we, uh, uh, you know, we move up the salary grid and we have senior staff and well-paid staff that we look for that to them for the best advice and for advice that goes outside uh, the boundaries of this uh, locality, this region, and uh, is is got to be, I think, the term cutting edge and innovative. Uh, we are a progressive community, and if we're going to invest in the staff, then we expect the results of that. And uh, so, I will be supporting uh, the uh, recommendation. And with that said, I'll call the vote. Then we're dealing with all the first four paragraphs. All in favor. Uh, it's carried unanimously. Um, Clerk Almas, if you can let Councillor Jeffrey, she can come back in. Councillor Berman, um, over to you for the amendment for the last uh, and further that. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Uh, for the council, can um, I, I guess I'd look to maybe the clerk for the proper way to word it, but I simply, uh, if this is approved, want it to start with the next council, not with this council. So I don't know if she'd prefer an exact date or if simply the term next council is enough. Thank you, Thomas. <clears throat> Sorry, thank you, Your Worship. Just looking at this, the last line states, and for the council compensation provisions be amended, maintained based on the recommendations of Gallagher Benefit Services Group. And sorry, is there there's an amendment to that? Yes, Councilor Berman would like it to commence with the next council. Okay. And so he's looking for wording. Uh, would it be commence with the next council, or is that enough sufficient? That's sufficient. Okay. Correct. There you go, yeah. Councilor. And if I may, I. I think that uh, Councillor Madigan had 
offered to second the amendment, but I don't see him on my screen. Well, Councilor Madigan, he is saying yes. He's prepared okay. to uh, second that. All right, Council, we have an amendment on the floor. Are there any questions or comments? Seeing none, then I will call the vote. Uh, go ahead, Deputy Mayor. Uh, through you to uh, Council Berman, why? Council Berman. Um, me personally, it doesn't feel right. I feel like I should almost be declaring a conflict right now to devote myself a raise immediately. So uh, that's why. Follow up, Deputy Mayor. No, thanks. Okay. Councillor Hamlin. Uh, yes, I have a question uh, for staff uh, concerning uh, Mr. Berman's or Councillor Berman's proposed amendment. Um, uh, the, is a conflict for voting on one's remuneration, is that a conflict under the uh, legislation that governs councillors? Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. I, I see, sorry, CEO Skinner has. Okay. Uh, CEO Skinner. Um, thank you, Your Worship. Uh, with respect for the uh, uh, high ethical character of all of our counselors. Um, the report that is prepared was prepared by a, a skilled third party consultant without influence in the, uh, the conclusions that that were made. And I think people should vote with their conscience, but I do want to point out that no, no council member had an influence on the recommendations that are being made uh, for counselor uh, pay today. And it was based on that um, uh, straightforward research and the comparators. Thank you. Thank you. I don't know. Was anyone else getting feedback on that? Yeah, it sounded like you were phoning in with a with a ransom note or something. Um, uh, Clerk Almas, you wanted to make comment, and then we'll go back to Councilor Berman. Certainly, uh, further to Councilor Hammond's question, no, to vote on Council's own remuneration is not a conflict of interest in accordance with the legislation. Councilor Berman. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson, and uh, and through you to, I guess, to all of Council, I think if I rewind the tape, I wasn't suggesting it was a conflict. I was just responding to the Deputy Mayor's question as to why I put this forward, and I said, I feel in a conflict voting myself a raise. I'm not suggesting at all that it is a conflict. Thank you for the clarification. Any other questions or comments on this, Council? Seeing none, then I'll call the vote on the amendment. All in favor? And opposed? And that is defeated. It's a tie. So with that being done, then I will call the vote on the main motion, uh, the main paragraph. All in favor? Just hold the cards up, please. We're getting this sorted out here. Okay. Um, Councilor Berman. Sorry, I just wanted to be clear what I was voting on. The, all five paragraphs now with the unamended or the No, four? We're, we're just voting on the final paragraph. Councilor, we severed okay. that off. Okay, so on the amendment that failed, we're, this is what we're voting on now. We're voting us on the main, uh, the main paragraph. Okay, great, thank you. So, so I'll call that again. All in favor? And opposed? So noted and that passes. Councillor McLeod. Thank you. And uh, so I would like to move uh, an additional um, and further that on this uh, particular motion. And uh, my further that is uh, that um, council expense accounts and honorariums be uh, the, the policy regarding them be amended to allow um, those expense accounts to be used for childcare. Okay. My goal here, of course, is to uh, is is to take into consideration the fact that we do want young people, younger people, to be able to uh, take part. And uh, if childcare is a barrier, I would like to remove that. And so uh, I know that we have amended uh, our expense policy in the last little while, and uh, I think that this would be a step towards uh, towards assisting 
uh, young families uh, to participate in, uh, in, in this part of democracy. Thank you. Councilor Jeffrey, you had your hand up. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. So I do appreciate the initiative and think it could be important, but it's also important for continuing education and professional development, particularly for new council members. So I think if we were, if we were going to consider it going forward, if Councilor McLeod might consider a portion of, as opposed to all of it. And that's it. Thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Thank you. Um, Councilor McLeod, do you want to respond to that? No, I, I do understand that. I understand your uh, your concern, uh, the concern about it. I, I think that um, since we've moved uh, to change the way that our expense accounts work in the course of this council, as a matter of fact, I believe it was early in 2019 that things got, or maybe early in 2020, ugh pandemic. Anyway, uh, we have changed how our expenses work and uh, in several ways. And this would just be a continuing evolution thereof. And so each councillor has $4,000 in the course of a year to spend as they please, um, uh, telephones and office supplies and education as well. I think you'll notice actually from the email that we received earlier this week that uh, some councillors are, are using it for nothing, uh, not even education uh, and so on. So I think that uh, some discretion. I think we can trust our our people to um, our future councillors to use this in a in a smart and thoughtful way, and that perhaps we can cross that bridge when we get there. If there comes a time where a councillor has to choose between going to something educational and um, paying for childcare so they can attend a meeting, um, we can definitely entertain that conversation at the table because I believe we're the rules are that we can go above the $4,000 with council um, approval. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what's in the policy. I, I stand to be corrected, but uh, so I, I, I think a first step towards, towards making childcare an option would be, would be good. And I think we need to do that. And then we can adjust as time, as time continues and troubles present themselves. I'll look, I'll look for a seconder Let's get this on the floor. <clears throat> Councillor Doherty and Councillor Hamlin, you had your card up. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just wanted to speak in support of Councillor McLeod's uh, motion to, or yeah, motion to amend. Um, I do believe that this is a good first step. Right now, you know, we're not spending much. I'm certainly not on <laughs> attending conferences. There's no conferences to attend. Um, so at this point, it would be a great use uh, of our uh, expense allocation. And I think as, you know, for whoever's on council next term, if we're out of the pandemic restrictions, uh, it might be a good time to revisit it. I do know, that I remember my, even my first year pre-pandemic, um, if a councillor chose to go to the EMO conference in Ottawa, which I did, and uh, also attended one other, uh, you know, educational event. That was the budget for that year for me. Um, so I, I, you know, would be encouraging whoever's here on the next uh, term of council to keep this in mind, but I am so supportive of this as a first step. Thank you. Thank you. Council, any other questions or comments? Um, well, before I call the vote, uh, Councillor Jeffrey, hand up. <coughs> Thank you, Mayor Saunderson. So without any prior knowledge of this coming up today, I'm wondering if I could just defer it to the next SIC meeting for consideration. I think it is a good step, but I think um, maybe staff should weigh in um, and we should have an understanding of, the, um, of it and our decision to do it. So I'm not against investigating it, but I'd just like to defer to the next SIC meeting. So we have a motion for deferral on the floor. Uh, I will look for a seconder. Councillor Berman. And then, uh, there's no discussion on deferral, so I'll call the vote. All in favor. One, two, three, four. And opposed. And so that is defeated. We're back to the, the amendment as proposed. And 
Uh, so unless there's further comments or questions, I will call the vote then. All in favor? And opposed? And that is carried. And we're going to move on then. Uh, that concludes our uh, conversation Mr. on the- Sorry, Mr. Mayor. I, as I mentioned earlier, there was one uh, change I wish to bring forward. Thank you. No, I didn't understand you to have a motion. Okay, go ahead, Councillor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is with respect uh, to the uh, paragraph I mentioned on the staff report at page four. And so what I'd be asking is for a further, sorry, and an additional and further <laughs> uh, that uh, uh, staff report back on the opportunities uh, to explore uh, the options uh, affecting the total number of counselors and part-time slash full-time status. I'll say in the new year. Thank you. I'll look to Clerk Almas. Does that fit within the timeline that you discussed earlier? Uh, thank you, Your Worship. We can we can definitely um, provide uh, preliminary reports on, on what it would take and, and some timelines. Sorry, just for confirmation for the resolution, it's looking at uh, part-time and full-time as well as the number of council members or not the number of council members? Yes, and the number. Okay. Thank you. All right, and I'll look for a seconder for that. Deputy Mayor, any questions or comments on this before I call the vote? Councillor Madigan. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Uh, haven't we already voted on this? Uh, before today's date, I don't know. Is this something that we've dealt with before? No, haven't we already voted on 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 four point one, the first part of this motion? We have, and then we're adding add-ons to it. Uh, so I'll look to the clerk on the procedural aspect of this, whether these are separate motions or their continuation of four point one. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, I was uh, contemplating that as well, and as it has been identified in the report, and there you know, appears to be some confusion on what the uh, compensation review addressed, I, I'm accepting it as an amendment. Okay, so it's a further paragraph to 4.1, Councillor Madigan. Councillor Berman. Thank you, Mayor Saunderson. Through you to the clerk. Um, I, I have no problem getting uh, uh, this information because I actually thought it was going to be part of the original report. But my question uh, is, by the time we get this, will we have passed a point where it's too late to do anything about it for the election that's in a year? So if we were to decide that we wanted seven councillors, is it too late to, to change that? Thomas? Thank you, uh, Your Worship. Um, understanding that this is a priority, once we identify the timelines, um, I think it's something we can definitely bring forward to Council you know, in the near future. We do have a number of you know, initiatives that uh, we'll be presenting at the next SIC, but uh, I will definitely even provide an update at Council with respect to timelines, you know, should they be coming close. Okay, that's great. Then uh, I will support uh, Councillor Hamlin's amendment. All right. Any other questions or comments, Council? Seeing none, then I'll call the vote. All in favor? And opposed? So noted, and that is carried. And then we're going to go, we're going to, the next item is 5.1, the budget discussions. We're going to bring that forward, as discussed earlier during the agenda. And... Um, so I will pass it over then uh, to oh, Councillor McLeod, go ahead. Thank you. Um, I would like to move that we refer this report back to staff. Um, we asked for uh, on September the 7th in our SIC and confirmed in our council meeting of September the 20th that we will be asking staff for a budget uh, report with a 3% increase uh, in operating funds year over year and with a 1% increase in the tax rate uh, year over year. And what we've received today is uh, 
is a report which contains a 5.37% increase in operating funding year over year and a 2.79% increase in the tax rate. Uh, and so um, not to be glib, but swing and a miss. Uh, so I would like to send it back to, uh, to staff to, uh, to do what was directed by council. Thank you. Um, I'll first look for a seconder. This is a motion to refer, so we can have discussion on this, uh, Deputy Mayor. And uh, I see Councillor Jeffrey, you have your hand up. Was that to speak to this issue or to second it? It was the second, and oh, uh, I agree. I, I agree with the Councillor's comments. So thank you. Okay. Uh, so the motion to refer back to staff is on the floor. Uh, as I said, we will. I will take comments <clears throat> on the motion to refer. Uh, are there any questions or comments before I call the vote? I've got Councillor Doherty and then Councillor Hamlin. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we are certainly not passing this budget in its finality today. So uh, I certainly recognize that this is a higher increase in budget than what we had originally discussed and directed. However, I wanna keep an open mind. I wanna hear what staff have to say. If there are some good ideas and good initiatives here, then perhaps we should consider them. Thank you. Councillor Hamlin. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I'm in agreement with that sentiment. I would uh, not like things taken out of the budget before uh, I've had an opportunity to know what they are. Um, I have sat here for three years and every year staff comes with a budget ask that's way bigger than what we ultimately resolve. Um, I'm not afraid of looking at a budget that's slightly more than uh, the numbers we heard about before. And I believe those numbers are in fact brought to us by staff in any event. So if they've had a change of heart, well, let's go with it. That would be my view. Thank you. Thank you. Other questions or comments? C.A.O. Skinner. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I understand the different points of view. Uh, I do think there is some merit from presenting uh, the staff um, summary of the budget today. Uh, we very much look forward to the direction and the guidance and even the questions of council in, in, on the items that are within the budget. And uh, in the presentation itself, uh, we've uh, put some effort in uh, last night and this morning to be very clear on where the 1% cap lies and uh, what items council would um, have the option to opt in, as well as some thinking about offsets. Um, so fully understanding uh, those pieces, I, um, I think now that everyone's together, it, it may make sense for uh, at least the, the uh, staff presentation of the material, which I think is high quality um, uh, to be, uh, be heard by council uh, strategic initiatives committee today. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Jeffrey. Uh, thank you, Mayor Saunderson. So my comment in response to the CAO is that staff had overnight to take a look at the changes they would make, but we're asking the public to have input on this and they would have uh, no time to have digested that information, nor uh, would any member of council be prepared well enough to have comment or make decisions on those things. So um, I, I still very much support um, the referral back to staff so that everyone can come in on the same page. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions or comments before I call the vote, Council? All right, um, before I call the vote, I, I will weigh in on this. And uh, I don't disagree with the um, sentiment that this is a starting point, that this is the draft and the beginning of the discussion. And we may very well end up at 2.79%. But to me, this is something about uh, procedure and it's a very important part of procedure and staff came to council and we provided a recommendation from our direction from council based on a recommendation from staff. And so I think that, uh, you know, this is council's role. We direct staff and staff come back. 
uh, within that direction and recommendations above and beyond that can be made and will be discussed and that has happened in all our previous budget discussions. I think it's very unfortunate this year that it's played out this way and uh, and I understand um, why that's happened, but Council gave direction and uh, and I, you know, we have had many discussions around this table about process and roles and responsibilities. And to me, this is a critical part of the process. So I will be supporting the motion to refer. I give CAO Skinner last word. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, understood. Um, one thing I would note for today, the items that are above the 1% cap are all itemized in the budget. They're in the front pages. There's about seven items that are noted. Um, the affordable housing piece, uh, uh, several staff members, et cetera. So there's no new information in, um, in what would be provided other than potentially offsets should you opt into those pieces, but fully understood uh, what the members have expressed. Thank you. Thank you. All right, and with that being said, then I'll call the vote on the motion to refer. All in favor? And opposed? duly noted and that is carried. All right, and then that takes us back then to item 4.2, which is the Q3 financial report. I'll pass it over to Treasurer Quinlan. Your Worship, we have a presentation coming. Okay, thank you. Wait for it to start. So this is part of our regular reporting um, that we've been doing throughout this year. Uh, it brings us to the end of quarter three or September 30th. Uh, the only change we've done uh, for this piece of the reporting is we've included a projection to year end so um, that we can plan and prepare for the rest of the year. Next slide, please. Uh, just one thing I wanted to add to remind the public and council that uh, this information is included on our town website under financial reporting and uh, variance analysis. And additionally, that um, the quarter four reporting will move forward in, in uh, March or April of next year. We have uh, just recently scheduled our year end audit for the week of April 4th with Baker Tilly. So um, it will be a little bit of time before we see uh, the next. Sorry, Treasurer, we're just, um, I know the volume's cutting out for me. Uh, I don't Is know it? if it's okay. or so. We'll move it closer. No, thank Is that you. better? Yes, that's better. Okay, I just, um, I just shared, so I don't know where it stopped there, but that the next report for quarter four will be um, in March or April of next year. And that we just uh, recently um, scheduled our year end audit with our auditors um, for April, the week of April 4th. Uh, so on this slide, we can, we're showing the uh, quarter three preliminary forecast. Um, as you can see, uh, essentially we are predicting a just under $200,000 uh, surplus for 2021. Uh, I realize that this is considerably different from years past and it's largely due to the decrease um, in supplemental billings. Uh, this decrease is due mainly to the fact that the growth of uh, assessment doesn't lag quite as much as it has historically, meaning that MPAC um, is moving quicker uh, to catch people upon occupancy and, and um, therefore it reduces the amount in supplemental billings in um, past years. But of course, that doesn't mean that our growth has slowed, but rather more that it's just the timing of when those bills come in. Additionally, um, the growth rate, uh, or my apologies. Additionally, we also increased uh, the budgeted amount for net supplemental billing. In years past, it has been uh, set at around $270,000. And this year, which I believe is a much more reasonable estimate, it's been included in the budget at $570,000. Next slide, please. Uh, with respect to uh, quarter three operating uh, results. Again, this is to the end of September 30th. We continue as a town to be in a good financial position. However, there are some increased pressures with respect to the pandemic, most notably in the vaccination checks that are occurring at um, recreation uh, places right now. Uh, the table on the next slide will illustrate the net impact of each department on their year-to-date surplus. 
And at this point in the year, uh, we, would ex we would expect in general that each department should be at or around 75% of budget values. Um, but the town is actually at around 67.5%, which leads to um, a slightly more favorable position than what would be expected. So this slide highlights um, the amounts that each department uh, uh, in terms of total surplus or deficit and the, um, the where they're at as at the end of uh, the quarter three. Um, for a couple of highlights, I would note that uh, again, taxation revenue is slightly behind or slightly lower than expected by about $70,000. There have been some additional expenditures for the IC ICBL that have been absorbed into general government. Um, while we've spent approximately $75,000 this year, um, there has been less activity than expected in general legal advice, and we've been using uh, these funds to offset this uh, unfavorable variance. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so the capital plan is well underway uh, for 2021. The total budgeted expenditures are at $38.8 million um, versus an actual spend year to date of $6.9 uh, there's a slide following that shows the net impact again of each uh, department and note that we only show the expenditures at this point since uh, a large amount of the capital is funded through reserves or through the operating budget. I'll also note that there are several major projects, um, meaning uh, that will be carried forward into the 2022 budget due to the timing of the actual spend. So that's why uh, when we look at the, the total actual of 6.9 versus the 38.8 it is lagging quite a bit. Next slide, please. Um, so again, I would just highlight that there are many projects underway. Um, however, there are some large, like the um, Mountain Road upgrade, the Splash Pad and Sunset Point uh, Park redesign that are um, being carried forward into 22 as the actual expenditures have um, been pushed uh, a little longer than expected. Um, and I think that's it. Next slide, please. Yeah, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Treasurer. Council, questions or comments? Oh, sorry. Uh, before I go to that, I think we need to go to the public. So, Clerk Almas, <clears throat> if you can see if there's any members of our audience that would like to speak to this item. Thank you, Your Worship. Yes, if members of the public are allowed to speak prior to Council's vote on the matter. If you wish to speak, please press the raise your hand feature and we will unmute you. And no one wishes to speak to this item at this time, Your Worship. Thank you. So I'll put the uh, item on the resolution on the floor and then we'll open up for discussion. It's staff report T2021-21, the 2021 Q3 financial report be received for information and that approval be received for the transfer of $9,500 from the council grants financial support budget to the 2022 operating budget to assist with increased needs expected in 2022. Can I get a mover and a seconder for that, please? Councillor Madigan and Councillor Berman. And I'll open the floor for questions and comments. Do we have any questions and comments on this? Seeing none, excellent report, Treasurer Quinlan. And I will call the vote down. All in favor. And that is carried unanimously. Thank you. And that brings us then to item six, which is public delegations. Clerk Thomas, do we have anyone that wishes to address council? Thank you, Your Worship. And again, since this is a special meeting of the SIC, the only matters that can be uh, discussed from a public delegation at this point for a maximum of five minutes are items pertaining to matters that are on this agenda. And if you wish to speak, please press the raise your hand feature. And there's no one uh, wishing to speak to uh, the committee at this time. Thank you, Sarah. And that brings us to a motion to adjourn then. Uh, Councillor Hamlin, this is a special meeting, so there is no other business. Go ahead. Uh, thank you. Yes, um, this relates back to the fact the budget has been uh, referred back to staff, Mr. Mayor. So uh, there was, uh, I've had a few inquiries from members of the public about what day would be, uh, they would be available, they would be entitled to speak to council about the budget. And I believe that was one matter that was 
we were going to be considering today. So I'm just wondering if when staff brings back the budget, they could also bring back uh, some suggested dates uh, for when the public will have input. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Council. So I'm looking for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Hamlin. All in favor? And that is carried. Thank you very much, everyone.